Welcome back to my channel. I know, it's been a minute. It's been a while for those of you that have been here since the beginning. For those of you that are new, hi, my name is Nyla Quia, and today I'm gonna get into my adulting journey of just how I got here. So I currently live in LA in a beautiful one bedroom apartment in an amazing area. I'm like 10, 15 minutes from the beach, the city, 30 from Malibu, like I'm loving my life. I also work in marketing and it's probably one of the best jobs I've had. It's almost like a dream position, honestly. Um, but I also work remotely from home. I have a limited PTO, which gives me a lot of flexibility to continue my influencer journey and doing things like this. I also get paid a pretty good amount of money. And people are always asking me like, okay, how did you get to where you are today? Especially given my background. And so today I want to bring a couple of tips and just some insights on my journey. And I hope that this can be helpful for your own journey. First question I get a lot is like, okay, how did you go from your background to where you are now? So for reference, I went to Georgia Tech and I studied neuroscience. I graduated with my bachelor's of science in neuroscience. And then I had a psychology minor, Spanish minor, and also a marketing certificate. So how did a neuroscience girl end up working in tech and then in marketing, which is where I am today? First things up, I've always been very interested in the creative space within marketing. It wasn't until my junior year that I decided or figured out that like, I don't wanna be a doctor and I don't wanna do medicine for the rest of my life. So why didn't I change my major? A lot of people ask me that and the main reason is money. I had a full scholarship for my current degree and I was already over halfway done. So there was no way in hell that I was going to add another major and then pay for a couple of more years simply because I changed my mind, right? Um, so rather than that, I was like, I need to do something else. I picked up a marketing certificate. So I added that to my course load and it did not change my um, graduation date, which is what I really cared about. And I took that and was able to continue learning neuroscience, which I loved. But also I picked up marketing, which is something that would help me into my future career. When it came to planning for my future career post-college, I had to get very creative. Now, one thing to note is that neuroscience as a major was very new at Georgia Tech. I was actually in the first class, or it was our first year when neuroscience was offered. Um, so that meant there weren't a lot of like external resources or even internal resources that can match us up with businesses or internships like all of our other colleges within tech had. Because of this, I had to get really creative, especially because I wanted to work in marketing. And so I would say kind of my first tip or my first thing that I did that was very helpful where I am today is I forged my own path. Where there was not a lane for me, I created one. I tailored my resume by merging neuroscience as well as my marketing experiences to paint this picture that I was an expert in my field. I had this edge in marketing because I knew how the brain worked. So I took a lot of psychology courses, um, even marketing psych courses, and I was able to tie that information into marketing by saying like, okay, I know how to best market to people because I know how our brain processes information. I know how we can best get people to do what we want in terms of like marketing and advertisements. So that was like my go-to answer whenever I'm in interviews and people are like, okay, well, how did you go from neuroscience to here? Or why are you interested in marketing? That was my way of getting into the door. Um, so now when it does come to actual marketing experience, because when you have background in one thing, but you're trying to break into something else, it's really important that you do get some sort of experience. So that would be my number two tip, if you will, is make sure you have some experience within the field you're trying to break into. Um, so given my like science background, it was really hard for me to get marketing only internships. I did get some though, although it was hard. I had two main ones. One, I worked at UPS as an employee communications intern. And then my second one, I worked at an influencer marketing agency. Now those are my only two internships. And I feel like that's unheard of for people that go to big schools like Georgia Tech or even just prestigious schools and you have a lot of connections, right? Typically people have multiple internships every single summer or they do co-ops. I didn't have that path. Um, but because of that, I made sure to utilize all of my experience from college on my resume. I was in a, a lot of clubs, a lot of organizations, and within them, I took on leadership roles. And a lot of those roles did fall within like the marketing umbrella. So I could speak to those within interviews as well as on my resume. So if you find yourself wanting to get into a field where you have zero experience, this is your time now to go out and get that experience. And I'm not saying go out and get a job, obviously, but if you're in college, it's a perfect time to start exploring clubs and organizations and going out for those roles. If you're not in school, I still, it, it might be a bit harder. You might have to, you know, pay for some courses, um, but look into your community. Look at 
different organizations in your community where you can go and help and maybe do some of the, the stuff that you're looking to get into and then take that experience and use it to your advantage when you're looking to apply for jobs or internships. And my number three tip is to recognize how important networking is. Once I was heading towards graduation, I had no idea what I was gonna be doing. Um, I thought about working at Accenture. That was kind of my plan. I was going to work at Accenture as a marketing consultant. They had an in-house marketing creative firm that they had just started and I was really excited for that. My interview went super well, um, and then they kind of low-key ghosted me. Um, as you guys know, if you graduated in 2020 with the pandemic, a lot of job offers were rescinded, a lot of businesses were downsizing, and that definitely affected me with all of my job opportunities. Even though I'm very faith-led, and I wasn't worried, too worried or like too stressed about it, I knew that God was gonna provide, I was gonna be okay. I graduated in the fall, December 2020, and come February 2021, I landed a contractor position with Apple. And I honestly got this position, yes, through hard work, but first things first was networking. Sometimes it's not about your background. Like, yes, you're going to need that to succeed and excel and get through the door. But to get that door open, you've got to know people. And sometimes when you're in the right place at the right time, that is when you experience your greatest blessings, I have to say. I was connected to a couple of different teams who saw my resume. I went through a lot of rounds of interviews. It was very stressful. I was very, I was just like, oh my God, this is so scary. Like Apple's a big company, um, but I was really excited for the role. Now it wasn't necessarily a dream role, but at that time, you know, when you're, you're young, you graduate college, what even is your dream role? You might not know. Um, this was project management. And I knew that it was something that I could do because a lot of your skill sets as a project manager, you learn through being a leader. If you're a naturally type A person like me, um, I had a lot of those skill sets, even though I didn't know that type of role before I went out for this job. Working at Apple as my first job right out of college was a crazy ride. A lot of really good opportunities came out of it. For one, um, because we were remote for like the first year, I was able to save a ton of money that helped my move to LA. I now live in a really great area. I'm loving my apartment. It's extremely spacious, especially for, um, for the area that I'm in. And I would not have been able to do that without that opportunity. But most importantly, from this first role, I gained a lot of skills as a project manager. I will say like naturally, I would, I would say naturally this was the job that was built for me. I would never have known if I didn't take this job, um, but I learned so much more, especially at like a young age. And I feel like I was built to be an amazing project manager that I am today. And a lot of people are kind of like, okay, you went from neuroscience to marketing to project management, like what? I know, it seems confusing, but the great thing about project managers is that we're needed in any industry, right? And that includes marketing. And marketing is a part of almost any industry too for any business. So at Apple, even though it's a tech company, I was not doing a tech job. I worked in the marketing operations team um, for their growth marketing overall team. I also knew that this would just be a great foot into the door of Apple if I ever wanted to expand in other roles there. It was gonna be great to be able to work on this team. And honestly, it was. I learned a lot in that position and I'm so happy that I was there for as long as I was. So that was a year ago. We're now in, well actually that was almost two years ago. And now we are in May of 2023. Where am I now? Um, as I mentioned before, my job at Apple was a contract role, which means there is a definitive end date. Um, I was extended for a couple of months and then that extension ended as well. And from there, you guys, this is where I'm telling you tip number four, number five again, networking, because I would not be where I am today without the great relationships that I made through just my past and all of my jobs especially at Apple as well. So after working my entire contract, I find myself without a job. But you guys, I was not stressed. If you followed me on my TikTok, I talked about it a lot on there. Like I was so sure God was gonna take care of me. Again, being faith-led I think is super important. And I was super optimistic about my future, to be honest. Within two days of being unemployed, I had interviews with other high-tech companies, other marketing agencies, and on day three, I was employed again at a different marketing agency. And that's where I am today, where I am a project manager. Another thing I like to tell people and tell my friends when we're talking about jobs and like our future and wanting to get higher salaries, wanting to save, wanting to build wealth, generational wealth, which I think a lot of black people as well as just a lot of people of color, that's our goal, right? We want to make sure we can provide for our family and have that money be generational, is nowadays, 
it's not the goal to necessarily stay at a company for 30, 40 years and you know, slowly climb that corporate ladder for that long. Because unfortunately, the way that our economy works, the way that capitalism works here today, in order to continue building your salary and increasing your salary at a faster rate than what we may have seen in our, our, our parents or past generations, you are somewhat gonna have to jump companies. And I don't mean, you know, work somewhere for less than a year and move or even a year and move, but be strategic about your moves, be strategic about learning more, adding more to your skill set, becoming a valuable asset for a company and being able to leverage that and leverage yourself as you may be looking for different jobs. Now, because I came from a really good company, Apple, I was being paid well because as a contractor, you get paid a lot. Um, they were able to still match and even exceed what I was earning as a contractor at Apple. I always use myself as an example because I didn't even, and it's crazy, like I told myself, I was like, you're gonna have a pay cut. You need to have expectations to have a pay cut. Even though the dreamer in me was like, girl, we can do it. We can still make this much money, and we did. Why? Because I knew my value and I spoke to my value, and the company that I work at now also saw that, right? And so when I talk to my friends and we, we discuss, you know, salary increases, we always talk about negotiating tactics. And I think a big part of it is when you, you are coming from a big company that's reputable, even if it's, even if you're not coming from a big company, you're coming from place A and they're paying you X, Y, Z, and you're moving to a new company, you have experience, you should absolutely be getting paid more. Some people might say equal, but go for more because you never know. If you don't ask, you never know. Like closed mouths don't get fed, you guys. Um, but yeah, today I like wake up and I'm so blessed to be in the position that I'm in now. Like I'm in the perfect job. And it's funny because if you ask me a year ago, like, oh, what would you want to do? What is the perfect position you want to be in? I wouldn't have been able to definitively tell you, but I can tell you today, I think this is probably the closest that, that I'll get to as far as, you know, as far as I know from all my experiences I've had, I work with social media, our clients, we do their social media campaigns. I'm able to utilize just kind of my natural abilities as someone who's organized. Um, I like to run things, make things, you know, run smoother. And I get to work with people. I get to sit in on the calls about our campaigns from ideation to execution. And that's my favorite part of the marketing process. And I, I don't know, I just love what I do today. And I'm so happy that I'm here. Um, and what's even greater is like, I'm in this great job that I love as my nine to five, but I'm also given the flexibility to be able to work on my personal brand, my influencing journey, my traveling as my hobbies. And I could not have asked for a perfect setup. And it's just crazy to think that all of those ups and downs that I went through has led me to today. But I hope that just hearing my journey can help you and encourage you to keep going and that you will get to where you're supposed to be. So just to recap all of my main tips, number one, Forge your own path if you have to. Two, utilize your experiences to your advantage. Three, network, 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 and never stop networking. <laughs> Four, don't be afraid to pivot if you ever need to in your career. And with that, a little like 4.5 is closed mouths don't get fed, baby. And last but not least, number five, have faith. If you are a believer, you need to have faith that God will continue to put you in the right path and your blessings will always come. I hope this was helpful. This is really fun just chatting about my journey. If you guys ever have any questions, please hit me up on Instagram. I mostly answer my DMs there, but feel free to comment as well. If you guys like this, you want me to talk more about anything that I mentioned today, please let me know. I'd be happy to go into more detail. I hope you guys have a fantastic week and yeah, see you next time.